morning, everyone, and welcome to the first of three presentations on the proposed amendments to the patent rules. This presentation will focus on the proposed amendments related to the topics of filing, priority, completion, and representation of the rules. The additional two presentations will cover the remaining seven topics outlined in the consultation documents. As part of the Canadian Intellectual Property Office's core vision, or CEPO's core vision, to enhance innovation and contribute to economic success in Canada, we are committed to improving the quality of our products and services. In order to ensure that these proposed amendments to the rules address our clients' needs, the Canadian Intellectual Property Office is undertaking an online consultation process from August 1st to September 8th, 2017. In addition to these presentations, 11 detailed discussion documents on the proposed amendments and a draft of the proposed rules are available on the CEPO website. Your feedback, comments, and suggestions on the impact of these proposed changes are an important step to this process and will help support the implementation of the proposed amended rules. This consultation has three main objectives. To inform stakeholders of proposed changes to the patent rules, to provide the policy rationale behind the changes, and to obtain feedback, questions, and comments on the draft rules. We will begin by providing a brief introduction on the rationale for the proposed amendments to the rules. This presentation will outline the proposed changes to the provisions of the rules for filing, priority, completion, and representation. We will conclude with information on how to provide comments regarding this consultation. These changes stem from the government's initiative to modernize Canada's intellectual property, or IP, framework. The government first announced plans in 2014 to join five widely recognized international IP treaties, the Madrid Protocol, the Singapore Treaty, the Nice Agreement, the Patent Law Treaty, and the Hague Agreement concerning the International Registration of Industrial Designs, abbreviated as the Hague Agreement. To give a bit of context, these proposed rules were drafted following two series of amendments to the Patent Act, which received royal assent on December 16, 2014, in Bill C-43, and on June 23, 2015, in Bill C-59. The amendments are not yet in force. They will come into force once the necessary coordinating amendments to the patent rules come into force. These amendments to the Patent Act and the proposed amendments to the patent rules are required for Canada to accede to the Patent Law Treaty. While the majority of the proposed amendments for the rules are required in order to comply with the requirements under the treaty, other amendments were made to undertake a broader review and renumbering of the rules. The amendments will increase legal certainty, streamline and clarify the Canadian Intellectual Property Office's processes and procedures, and align Canada's patent protection regime with that of its international trading partners. A modernized patent framework will enable Canada to keep pace with leading international standards and benchmarks, in turn helping Canadian businesses stay competitive in international markets by giving them an efficient means of protecting their intellectual property in various jurisdictions around the world. A regime that is aligned with other jurisdictions will also lower the cost and increase the ease of doing business here to the benefit of both Canadian businesses and those looking to invest in Canadian markets.
The Patent Law Treaty, abbreviated as PLT, was concluded in June 2000 with an aim to harmonize and streamline the administrative procedures for patent applications and patents. In other words, applicants and patentees will be able to expect the same or similar administrative processes for all jurisdictions for patent applications and patents. There is no change to substantive patent law. What is patentable doesn't change and remains part of domestic laws. At present, the Patent Law Treaty has 39 contracting states, while 59 states and the European Patent Organization have signed but not yet ratified the treaty. Canada signed in 2001 and in 2014 noted its intent to ratify the Patent Law Treaty by making the necessary amendments to the Act. Once the corresponding amendments are made to the patent rules, Canada will ratify the Patent Law Treaty. Some of the major changes to the Canadian patent regime include simplified and standard requirements to obtain a filing date, a notification before abandonment, thereby preventing applicant loss of rights without first being advised, the introduction of a two-month grace period for restoring priority, and the introduction of a due care standard and third-party rights when certain actions are not completed within the prescribed times. In the next few slides, we will discuss the changes to filing a patent application, completing a patent application, priority and representation. Let's begin with the proposed amendments to file a patent application. Through a patent, the government gives the owner the right to stop others from making, using, or selling your invention from the day the patent is granted to a maximum of 20 years after the day on which you filed your patent application. In order to secure a filing date, the application must comply with the minimum requirements to obtain a filing date. Those minimum requirements have been simplified under the Patent Law Treaty. Under the current patent rules, the applicant must submit th the above elements as well as the final fee in order to secure a filing date. The description, the document that describes the invention, must currently be in English or French. Under the proposed amendments to the patent rules, the filing fee is no longer required to secure a filing date. The amendments also allow the description, the document that describes the invention, to be submitted in any language. Although the information requirements regarding the applicant and their contact information have been lessened, the Canadian Intellectual Property Office will continue to encourage applicants to fully and correctly identify themselves as well as their complete address and other contact information when they file a patent application. This will help reduce confusion for both applicants and the office when processing the application. If the requirements are complied with on different dates, the latest of those dates will be the filing date given to the patent application. If the minimum requirements are not met, for example, there is no document in any language that appears to describe the invention, then the commissioner will send a notice requiring the submission of the remaining requirements within two months of the date of the notice. If they are not submitted within those same two months, then the application will be deemed to have never been filed. An application no longer requires a filing fee to be paid at filing. However, not paying it at that time will result in a $150 late fee. If the filing fee is not paid on the filing date, the commissioner will send a notice to the applicant requiring the filing fee and a late fee of $150 to be paid within two months of the date of the notice. If the fee is not paid within those same two months, 
then the application will be deemed withdrawn. Although the document describing the invention, that is the description, does not need to be in English or French to establish a filing date, the applicant is required to submit a translation into English or French of any part of the specification, the part of the patent application that contains a description of the invention, or drawings that on the filing date was not entirely in English or French. For more information, please see the consultation document entitled Filing Requirements. Inventions are eligible for a patent when they are new, non-obvious, and inventive. The assessment of eligibility for a patent is done using the filing date. If you have already submitted a patent application for the same invention in Canada or in another country, you may be able to claim priority to that earlier patent application and in effect use the priority filing date for that assessment. Canada is a contracting party to the Paris Convention, a treaty that allows an applicant for a patent to request what is called convention priority, otherwise referred to as claiming priority. When a priority claim is made, the filing date of a patent application filed in one member country will be recognized by other member countries provided patent applications are filed in those other countries within one year of the filing date. It is also possible to claim priority in a Canadian application based on an earlier filed Canadian application. For example, if you filed a patent application in Canada on January 2, 2017, you could file up to one year later in most countries, including Canada, up to January 2nd, 2018, and still be given the same rights as if you had filed the application on January 2nd, 2017, when you claim priority. Some amendments have already been made in the Patent Act with respect to priority. There are additional proposed amendments in the patent rules with respect to priority. Under the current patent rules, the request for priority must be made no later than 16 months from the filing date of the earliest priority application. The proposed amended rules would impose a limit to make a request for priority before the application is open to public inspection. If it is not open to public inspection, then a request for priority may be made before the later of 16 months from the earliest priority or four months after the filing date. Under the current patent rules, the information contained in a priority request may be corrected by submitting a request to correct a clerical error under Section 8 of the Patent Act. If made within the timeline to make a priority request, it is possible to withdraw the incorrect request and submit a new one. Section 8 of the Patent Act has been repealed, though it is not yet in force. Under the proposed amended patent rules, there are new provisions regarding corrections of information in priority claims within specific timelines. More information on corrections to priority information will be presented in the third webinar of this series, as well as the consultation document entitled Corrections. Under the current rules, applicants are only required to submit a copy of the priority documents if it is taken into account by the examiner during examination. If it is in a language other than English or French, a translation must be submitted along with the document. Failure to provide either the priority documents or the translation results in the application being deemed abandoned. Under the proposed amended rules, applicants will be required to submit a copy or make available copies from a digital library of all priority documents within a time limit. 
The translation is not required unless the examiner takes into account the priority during examination and requests a translation of the priority documents. If the documents or the translations are not provided within the time limits, the priority claim will be disregarded and the application will no longer go abandoned. Restoration of the right of priority is not available under the current Patent Act and rules. Approved changes to the Patent Act, not yet in force, provide for the restoration of priority where a subsequent application is filed within two months after the expiration of the priority period. That is, from 12 to 14 months from the filing date of the earliest filed application. The request for restoration of priority must be made no later than two months after the filing date of the pending application. Therefore, the time limit for successfully requesting restoration of priority can be up to 16 months from the filing date of the earlier filed application. There is no proposed fee for making a request for restoration of the right of priority. Please see the consultation document on priority and the draft rules for more information. A patent application consists of many parts, only a few of which are required to obtain a filing date. Please see the discussion paper on minimum filing requirements. However, all of the parts of the patent application must be submitted to complete the patent application within a short time after the filing date. The parts required for a complete patent application will not change under the amended patent legislative regime, though there will be some proposed changes regarding how and when an application is to be completed. The current patent legislative regime requires a sum of parts for a complete patent application. A description is required at filing, whereas the rest of the parts are not required to obtain a filing date. If the remaining parts are not provided at the time of filing, then the patent rules require them to be submitted within 15 months of the filing date or the earliest priority date requested. If the application does not meet the completion requirements within that time, the Commissioner sends a notice requiring the applicant to comply with the requirements before the later of three months from the date of the notice and 12 months after the filing date, as well as a completion fee of $200. If the applicant does not respond to the notice, the application becomes abandoned. The recent changes to the Patent Act, which are not yet in force, and the proposed amendments to the patent rules maintain the same list of parts and requirements, though some would no longer be required to complete a patent application to make it compliant. Under the new proposed legislative regime, if the application is not complete on the filing date, the Commissioner will send a notice requiring it to be completed. Once the notice is sent, the applicant will have three months from the date of the notice to comply with the completion requirements. There will no longer be an additional fee to complete the application after a notice is sent. However, if the notice is not complied with, then the application will be deemed abandoned with the possibility to be reinstated. Please see the discussion paper on representation for more information. The proposed amendments to the patent rules maintain the current provisions for patent agent exams, eligibility, registration, and maintenance of patent agents on the patent agent register. The current patent rules imposes limits on who the patent office can communicate with during the patent application stage. The patent office can only communicate with the authorized correspondent, which is typically the appointed patent agent. 
Proposed amendments to the patent rules will allow more flexibility with respect to who can represent the applicant and communicate with the patent office regarding certain actions to prosecute and maintain a patent application. The proposed amendments will also introduce the concept of a common representative. There is no common representative under the current patent rules. The proposed amendments define which applicant is the common representative when there is more than one applicant. A common representative is one of multiple applicants or patentees and allows him or her to represent them jointly. This concept, similar to the existing one in the Patent Cooperation Treaty, is intended to address situations where joint applicants cannot all sign the same document in a time-sensitive procedure, such as the appointment of a patent agent. The proposed amendments also contain default provisions for identifying the common representative when none has been appointed or when they are no longer an applicant or patentee. In terms of requirements for a patent agent, the proposed amendments maintain the mandatory requirement under the current rules to appoint a patent agent if the application is filed by someone other than the inventor, there is more than one inventor and the application is not filed by all of the name inventors, or a transfer has been recorded with the patent office. In terms of requirements for an associate patent agent, the proposed amendments maintain the regulatory regime for associated patent agents. If the applicant is required to appoint a patent agent, the patent office will send a notice requiring the appointment within three months after the date of the notice. The applicant will be able to appoint an agent who resides in Canada or a non-Canadian resident agent, who in turn will be required to appoint an associate patent agent who resides in Canada within the same three months of the notice. Failure to do so will cause the patent application to be deemed abandoned. Please see the discussion paper on abandonment and reinstatement for more information. A patent agent can be appointed in the petition when the patent application is filed or the request for patent cooperation treaty or PCT national phase entry or by submitting a notice to the commissioner signed by the applicant or patentee or a common representative if they are multiple applicants. Noting that an appointment in the petition or in the request for PCT national fees entry does not need to be signed by the applicant or common representative. Only an appointed patent agent can appoint an associate patent agent. A foreign patent agent must appoint a Canadian associate patent agent. If the appointment is made at the time of filing an application for a patent, it can be made in the petition as submitted when filing for a patent or in the request for PCT national phase entry or by submitting a notice to the commissioner signed by the appointed patent agent. If the agent is required to appoint an associate patent agent, the Patent Office will send them a notice requiring them to do so within three months after the date of the notice. Failure to do so will cause your patent application to go abandoned. Please see the discussion paper on abandonment and reinstatement for more information. Please note these types of appointments do not need to be signed by the appointed patent agent. During the application stage, the patent rules impose a limit so that the only person who can take action on the file, whether it is to communicate with the patent office, submit documents, or pay fees, is the authorized correspondent. If a patent agent has been appointed, they are the authorized correspondent. Otherwise, it will be the inventor who is also the applicant. 
Once the patent has been granted, the patent office will accept maintenance fee payments from persons authorized by the patentee. The proposed amendments will permit more individuals to represent the applicant for certain actions related to prosecution and maintenance of patent applications. In general, the following individual will always be allowed to take action with the patent office. The appointed patent agent, the sole applicant if a patent agent is not required, or the common representative if there are multiple applicants and if a patent agent is not required. However, there are exceptions where other individuals will be able to perform some actions related to the prosecution and maintenance of patent applications, whether or not a patent agent has been appointed. For example, to submit a patent application or a request for PCT national entry, the appointed patent agent or associate patent agent can always act, as well as any of the applicants or a person authorized by any of the applicants. The same goes for paying maintenance fees for a patent application or a patent. The appointed patent agent or associate patent agent may pay maintenance fees, as well as any of the applicants or a person authorized by any of the applicants. There are also exceptions as to who can request to record a transfer. For more information, please see the discussion document on representation and the draft rules. At the end of the consultation period on September 8, 2017, comments and submissions received will be reviewed. Stakeholders will have another opportunity to provide comments when the draft rules are published in Canada Gazette 1. During this stage, the public will have 30 days to provide input and comments. The proposed rules will then be presented to Cabinet for final approval. If approved, the rules will be published in the Canada Gazette 2 with a coming into force date of the Act and Rules. As the proposed rules advance over the coming months, we will continue to engage stakeholders, for example, on the development of office practices and the manual of patent office practice. This concludes our presentation on the new provisions of the amended patent rules. Should you have any questions or comments on the contents of this presentation or on the rules, you can visit our website for further information. Here you will find links to key information pages as well as current information on the next steps in this process. To learn more, ask questions, and submit your comments or feedback on the proposed amendments, please email us at the address on the screen. In addition, you can follow CEPO on social media where we will continue to post updates on the consultation process. Thanks for watching.